What's the story of South Tampa? What's our story? Is it the story that it's a small town feel in a big city? Is it that we have great local coffee shops, food, and places to purchase things? Is it the story of a massive pirate invasion and parade we call Gasparilla? Like, is that our story? You know, there's probably a few ways that we could tell the story of South Tampa. Maybe it's something like this. We're a community that is smooth on the outside, but shattered on the inside. We're a community that has everything, but is still longing for more. We're a community that has every reason to be satisfied, and yet so many in South Tampa are not. I'm not sure how you would tell the story of South Tampa. But if you are a believer in Jesus, I think this would have to be a part of that story. Much of South Tampa is unsatisfied because much of South Tampa doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. So guess what, Titus? We're going to drop you in the middle of South Tampa so that you can live and write and tell a better story. That there's something greater than all these things that people are running so hard to chase after. That there's a God who's chasing after you. Chasing after you not because he's mad at you. Chasing after you because he loves you. Uh, over the past 10 days, Sharon, Zeke, and I had the privilege of going to visit two of our seven church partners. By the way, why do we have church partners? I don't know. Have you read the book of Titus? Uh, like, that's what the New Testament is about. Like, once you get outside the four Gospels, it's all about we're on the same team. Like, if you're a follower of Jesus, then we wear the same jersey. It doesn't matter what's on the back of your jersey. It's what's on the front. And there is this big C church that we are a part of. So we right now have seven, almost right on the verge of, of introducing to you an eighth church partnership that you're going to be very excited about. But right now, seven. And Sharon and I uh, spent the last 10 days with two of them. L let me tell you about the Tabers. Uh, the Tabers have been with us many times. Matter of fact, we were the first ones to partner with them. We were the first ones to really believe in the vision that, that Jim and Brandy had that Billings, Montana could have a different story. Because if you were in Billings with me, here's the story of Billings. That there are more alcoholics in Billings than any other city. That more people have gambled away their fortune than in any other city. You know what also about the city of Billings? That there's more suicides in Billings than anyone else, anywhere else. You know what's super sad about that? The majority of those suicides, 18 and under. That's the story. And Jim and Brandy said, not on our watch, not on our island, not in Billings any longer. So, so they planted a church over five years ago in, in the city of Billings. They're every Sunday running over 300 people. Now they're in two services. And next Sunday, they're going to break ground on their first building ever. They're going to have it on this amazing street that God has provided for them. There's a park and a middle school across the street. And, and, and about two blocks down, there's a high school. And they have such a vision for changing the story of Billings. I, I said there's a park across the street. T two times a year, uh, they're able to go outside and have church in the park. Uh, they always make sure that they have worship. They always make sure they have some baptisms. Because people ask, like, why did that person get wet? Like, what's going on? And so it's a great testimony to share. Oh, that's someone who was dead. Now they're alive. And people are like, what do you mean by that? Uh, and so they're able to share the good news of the gospel. As they were doing that just a couple of uh, weeks ago, after the message, they gave an, an invitation. Many people came forward. They had 1,000 people in the park. At this church service. And one lady came forward and gave her life to Christ. And, and they said, well, look, we're, we're having some baptism. Would you like to be baptized? She didn't know what baptism was, but she was like, yes. If that means I'm telling people I love God, that's what I want to do. And, and so she went. She changed clothes. As she came out, they went, uh-oh, there's a problem. 
And they go, well, what's the problem? Like, anyone can be baptized if you've given your life to Christ. They go, yeah, but um, she's got an ankle monitor on, so we're really not sure what we're going to do here. And they said, no problem. And so one, they have two gyms that, that are the pastors there. So one gym baptized her. The other gym held her ankle out of the water. It's the greatest thing you've ever seen. You know what they're doing? They're changing the story of Billy. And then after a few days with them, we got to go down and see our friend Trevor. Trevor was with us just several months ago. They haven't had a church service yet. And, and, and as of Saturday, they've baptized 115 people. I've got to tell I've never heard anything like this. I got the privilege of meeting several of them. Matter of fact, on Saturday, uh, they were out at this river and they baptized 20 people in the river on Saturday. Now, here's why that's so important. Do you realize that less than, less than 2% of Denver's population claims to have a faith relationship with God? You know what Trevor's doing? Like, I don't believe the story. <laughs> like, I don't care. We're going to write a different story. I I'd love to tell you about all the people I met. Hey, I gave my life three uh, months ago, and I've already led three of, uh, three of my family members to Christ. Hey, six months ago, I gave my life to Christ. I've already led six of my friends into And that's all the stories that you hear. We had the privilege of meeting an uh, a, a overseas professional basketball player who, after playing professionally overseas, uh, opened up several uh, bars in the Miami community and lived the lifestyle. He got married, and uh, his wife had faith in Christ, but she was definitely not living for the Lord at the time. And then after they got married, um, she felt very convicted because, remember, if you truly are a believer, there's a thing called the Holy Spirit that lives in you. And the Holy Spirit started doing what it does for many of us, going, uh-uh, uh-uh. That's kind of how I like to describe the Holy Spirit, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, that's not leading to godliness. Don't do that. And she goes, I kept hearing this, uh-uh, uh-uh. And she goes, I, I, it'd been so long, I'd, I'd become deaf to it. And she said, all of a sudden, she realized, like, I'm not being who I was called to be. And so even though her husband owned several bars in Miami and doing the thing, she decided she was start, going to start doing the right thing. And it's been 10 years. And about five months ago, he gave his life to Christ. And, and here's what he said. What must I do now? Kind of like the Ethiopian eunuch, right? What can I do now? He goes, um, you can be baptized. He goes, I want to be baptized. And his wife was so excited. But the minute, it was almost, I mean, he's telling the story. I'm just relaying it back to you. It was almost the exact moment he said, I want to give my life to Christ. And I want to be baptized. His wife, who, who's just amazing, all of a sudden became crippled with this chronic disease. To the point that he said, well, well, then maybe I should deny the faith. Because things were better when I wasn't a believer. Like she was healthy and happy. And she said, no, please don't do that. It got so bad, he actually called his uh, uh, in-laws and said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk. I, I think somehow, some way, I've brought this on, this, this spiritual warfare in what she's going through. And they said, listen. If the Lord chooses to slay her, you do not turn back on following Christ. So two weeks later, our friend Trevor had the privilege of baptizing him. And man, I, I wish you could have been with us as he's just glowing, sharing his God story. And immediately, her health was restored. Can I just tell you that in Denver, they're starting to tell a different story. But church, we don't live in Billings. We don't live in Denver. We live in South Tampa. What could it take for South Tampa to hear that there's a better story? What could it take for you and I to live as if we know the better story? That's what Paul's going to encourage us to do. That's what I'm going to encourage you to do, to live and tell a better story.
that it's a relationship in Jesus and nothing else.